So there's this study that um, some YouTubers have been making videos about and also people have been talking about online about how using agile development increases the failure rate of a project 268%. So in this video, I'm not going to like react to a blog post. I'm not going to read through this stuff. I'm going to give my opinions on agile development. I've been doing it for almost 10 years now, and that's really the only type of development I've done. I haven't even done waterfall, which is what agile development was basically or kind of replace. Um, I kind of watched through the Prime Engine's video where he talked about this article. I think the mistake is, is that people group Scrum, which is like a subset of Agile, into um, Agile in general. And I think it gives Agile a bad name. But also, if you were to search Agile, the first like top rated things are like people saying Agile's broken, it doesn't work, stuff like that. And you, they, they just feel like just clickbait YouTube videos because, again, I've been doing Agile for 10 years and I mean, it works fine. We deliver software, we make iterative changes, we get that deployed out to users. And I want to kind of just make sure that we're all on the same page. There's Agile development and there's Waterfall, okay? Waterfall is an older approach where basically all the requirements up front are talked about between your team, like your team of engineers and UX engineers, et cetera, with your client or your users. And so you basically spend a bunch of time writing out documentation and okay? you write tons and tons of documentation about like business requirements. You get that all on paper and then you guys kind of agree on like what we're going to do. You sign some contracts, money's exchanged, and then you start working on it. And typically the process follows very, you know, sequential steps. You design and then you build and then you test and then you deploy and then you're done. No problems. Everything works perfectly. And it turns out in practice, it sounds great on paper, but in practice during the design phases and the initial phases of the project, there's a huge time lapse and gap between what your client thinks they want and what you actually deliver. And after you finally ship the project after a year or two, your client ends up using your software and they're like, yo, this is actually not the way I expected this stuff to work. This is not what I want. And now you have to go back to the drawing board and you wasted a bunch of time and you have to re redo all this stuff, right? So Agile was a response to this where can we just ship software? Can we just work on software? Can we ship it? Can we get it in front of users? And I would say a lot of startup companies do agile properly because their teams are smaller. They have to get feedback from users as fast as possible because if they don't build tooling for the users that they're targeting, no one's going to use their product, right? So agile, I don't even say it's like a methodology. It's just like four sentences that you're supposed to abide by and try to focus on when you're doing your project management and you're building out your software. So one of the things that I think people get confused about is Scrum is basically taking the Agile methodologies by reading through this manifesto, which I'll talk about in this video, and applying more process to it. There's a bunch of red tape that happens at larger companies, which they seem to like process, and the process helps them estimate deliverables. At least that's what they think. They think that the estimates will help. So Scrum is one approach that is considered agile. Another one that I personally would love to do, and I think I recommend it for all projects and small teams, is just Kanban, right? Let's talk about Scrum real quick. Scrum is the one that typically gets the bad rep and people complain about it, right? This is the one that involves daily standups. It involves a retrospective. It involves sprint planning, um, backlog, refinement, and then demos to clients, okay? There might be some other things. This is basically what a lot of companies do, right? So they'll have every morning for 15 minutes, all the engineers and the designers and the UX team and the product managers and the scrum masters and sometimes the clients, every day for 15 minutes, they get into a Zoom or a Hangout and they basically talk about what they worked on yesterday, what they're working on today and their blockers. I think the daily standup is, it needs to be modified to meet your team needs. I think that original where you talk about what you worked on yesterday, you talk about what you're working on today and blockers. It's just stupid. What I've seen in the industry, our daily standup, we just talk about what we're working on today. And then we also demo things to our client. So we go ahead and just demo daily to client. That might be a lot for some people. Some people feel like they don't have something to demo daily. Honestly, I disagree. I think there are some things that you can talk about and inform your client about. Let's say you're working on a really cool feature, which might result in a lot of uh, performance issues in the back end. You can make those issues apparent to the client and say, hey, you know, we're trying to work on this story, but it turns out that it's going to be a lot more work than we thought it was. And then the client can be like, well, we only have like five users who knew this feature or 10 users who actually use this feature. So let's actually not even work on this. It's just turning out to be more work than we needed. And let's just ax it. So I think the idea of the daily standup, people hate it, but I think it's just a way to force people to collaborate and communicate with each other because before that, 
uh, what I've seen is that you have engineers go off on their own, they work on something for a week, and then you find out they've been blocked for like four days because they can't figure out a bug. And then you get into a Zoom with them and you work with them for like five minutes and then you fix their issue. And I'm not making this up. I mean, this is something I've done myself too. Like I really want to fix a bug. I really want to solve a problem. I try to go off by myself. And I try to work on it and I get stuck and I can't figure something out. And I ask someone to come join me and they give me a suggestion and it fixes my issue in 10 minutes. And so the idea of the daily standup, which on our teams, we do pair programming and mod programming every day. So I'm always in a Zoom with someone working on a story together. So there's two or three people all using their brains to work on something. That is the ultimate goal of Agile is like collaborate in people over process, right? And that's the first thing, individuals, interactions over processes and tools. So the more that you focus on improving how much interactions and, you know, focusing on the individuals and their needs, the better your project is going to work, in my opinion. Now, the same thing, retrospective. Again, that's supposed to be for the engineering team and the actual team working on the story. Sometimes the client will be in here as well. It doesn't really matter. The point of this, again, is to improve collaboration and improve interactions. If you work for a week or two and you take some time as a team to just find a safe place to talk about things that you ran into, maybe discuss things that didn't go too well, maybe discuss ways that you can make things better, that is the point of the retrospective. Now, some teams, this is a very hostile meeting where people feel like they can't speak their mind. You need to make sure your retrospectives are high in psychological, I don't know if I spelled that right, safety. Okay, so everyone needs to be, feel free to be able to speak their mind. And some people will do like cards that are anonymous and like they don't want people to even be able to like know who put the card. Honestly, if you have to be anonymous and you can't openly and speak freely to your team about issues, you don't have psychological safety. You shouldn't feel like you're gonna get fired because you pointed out that that bug that got to production, we need to do better. We need to figure out a way to that not happen again, whether that's more automated testing, whether that's more manual testing, whether that's figuring out requirements better before we actually consider the story done. These are things that you need to have open conversations with. And the one thing I don't like with the retrospective is that we wait two weeks to do this. This is something that you should be able to do daily. You should be able to just in a Slack channel, message your teammates and say, hey, Here's an issue. Does anyone have recommendations of how we can like prevent this in the future and just have an open dialogue about it? I don't think waiting two weeks or after the sprint, if you're doing scrum, is beneficial. And then some teams will actually have the client in the retrospect, which can sometimes hurt psychological safety. People can't feel like they can speak freely when the client's there about how they can improve or what they did bad on. But again, if the idea is customer collaboration, I think it's good to leave them in the loop of where things are going wrong or how you can improve some certain processes, okay? Now there's other things as well, uh, backlog refinement. Okay, that's more for like, you know, project management estimates and stuff. There's sprint planning. That's to figure out how much work you can do in like the next week or two. Now the sprint planning, the backlog refinement, I personally don't care about them. Like some teams do them. Some th people think it's important. You do like story estimates and stuff. I personally would say don't estimate stories. Just let everything be one point. It'll get done when it gets done. As long as you are testing everything before it gets to production and you make sure that you, you know, check through your criteria to make sure it's quality and production ready code. But a lot of teams do this in Scrum. They'll do sprint planning. They'll do backward refinement. Maybe this takes an hour. This one takes an hour. Basically, it's to figure out what are the most important tasks to work on next and how long do those tasks, in estimates, how long do you think it's going to take them? If your team is bickering over estimates and they spend a bunch of time just trying to estimate one story, I would say your team is doing it completely wrong. Again, this is supposed to be estimates. If someone's putting too much pressure on making sure these estimates are accurate, then you need to kind of speak up in your retrospective and say, hey, I think estimates are dumb. This is why. I think we're wasting a lot of time estimating stuff when they're supposed to be estimates, not like deadlines. But again, like you just need to speak your mind. Um, now, demos the client. This one I think is very important. This also points to customer collaboration over contract negotiation. And again, I keep referring back to this, this web page, right? This is the Agile Manifesto, which only has four sentences. Literally, this is all Agile is. If you take those four sentences, that is what you're supposed to follow if you're doing Agile development. And none of this is related to Scrum, okay? Scrum tries to implement these Agile methodologies but some people may say that it goes too far. It adds too much process because, you know, there's there's meetings, right? People complain that, oh, I'm in meetings all day. Honestly, there's not that much time in a week you're spent on these meetings. It's probably four hours uh, every 40 hours. 
So like 5% of your day is spent in these meetings. So people complain that there's too many meetings. I don't think they're doing Scrum correctly. Or they have other meetings that are in their calendar that are not Scrum related. Backlog refinement, demos the client. This is supposed to happen every sprint. Backlog refinement might be an hour or two. Sometimes I've seen backlog refinements take 10 minutes. Sometimes I see sprint planning take five minutes, right? It just depends on how much stuff you guys need to talk about. And I think it's good to have some type of person who is facilitating the meeting who can just keep it moving. Because if you just have a bunch of people there twiddling their thumbs and like slowly making the meeting drag on, you need someone to say, hey, stop talking. We need to move on to the next task. Daily standups are 15 minutes a day, sometimes 30 minutes if you're doing demos to the clients daily. And then also you have like a, at the end of the sprint, you have like this longer demo where you kind of talk about all the features and bugs you fixed to various clients and stakeholders in your project. But again, Scrum is just one implementation of the Agile uh, manifesto, which again says individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So at every point of your retrospective, you probably should be going back and revising these and like making sure you understand these and say, okay, are we focusing too much on processes and tools? Or are we focusing on just the individuals, letting people get their work done, letting them interact with each other, not putting blockers in between these interactions. You need to focus on these. Working software over comprehensive documentation. So this one comes more from like, um, I would say waterfall, where again, we have like this huge document that has all the requirements and your team tries to fulfill them. And then you realize that you didn't even do it right and your client is very unhappy. And so the idea is try to just ship working software as much as possible and get it in front of real users. And I would say startup companies do this the best. There's been examples where I'll reach out to a company. For example, I'm using Eraser for this diagram. I remember messaging the CEO. I'm like, hey, it'd be really cool if we had dark mode or it'd be really cool if Eraser did this. And within about a week or a couple of days, they fixed my bugs that I mentioned and they also added dark mode. Okay, so again, working software, just get stuff shipped in front of users when they request it. I think what a lot of companies do wrong is they end up like adding all this additional processes and tools and like documentation of like, okay, we have to plan this out. We think it's going to take this long. And then we have to make sure all these things are, are met. And then we have to make sure this, that, and the other. And it's like, why not just set two people on the story, let them work together, let them get it done and get it in front of you. And we can just reiterate on the story if there's anything we missed. Now, I will say that the manifesto says, while there's value on the items on the right, okay, so these are the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. So the manifesto is not saying you should not have comprehension, comprehensive documentation. It's just saying that don't focus too much on it. Don't spend all your time making sure everything is documented and diagrammed out and checked off and you have like this stuff that gets promoted up the ladder and people have to check off on it. Just ship working software and iterate on it if you missed a mark. And I think that's something very important you need to remember about the manifesto is that like, they emphasize the left. They don't say the processes and tools are not important. They just say that if you focus too much on processes, it's gonna start slowing down your team and your project. The next one, cl customer collaboration. Again, over contract negotiation. One thing Scrum does well is that it does force the team to constantly try to demo their work to the client. And if you do your demos daily to like during your standup, that just improves the quality of your project because you're getting feedback constantly on everything that you're working on and you don't waste a bunch of days building something that the client decides that they don't even want. Okay, so collaborate with the customer. If you can't reach out to your client or your customers daily and get feedback, and if there's like a, a gatekeeper who's in between you doing your work and your team getting work done and the users and the clients of the system, that's a problem, right? You want to improve individual interactions. So if there's blockers or there's like, oh, well, the only person who talks to the users and the client is this one guy and he's the one telling us what to build. I feel like that's kind of a problem, right? You should be able to have good collaboration with your customers um, and that should be happening as much as possible. Okay, and the last one, responding to change over following a plan. This is something that I think is very important as well. Um, and I guess they're kind of addressing waterfall where they have like this giant requirements document, this plan that they're gonna follow. And the issue is, is if someone throws a wrench in that plan, the whole thing starts to fall apart because you have to go back and like redesign and redo everything. Agile, the point of this is to teach you and your team that when something changes, when someone throws a wrench in your process or when someone, someone leaves your team. So here's a good example. Let's say two people decide to quit around the same time on your team. That is change. Is your team agile enough to continue working and delivering software at a rapid pace like it did before. 
Or did you guys all work off in silos and no one knows how anything works with those two people who left and now your team has a huge setback? Working with an agile mindset is keeping that in mind that anything that could cause change in your project, whether that's onboarding someone, people leaving, whether that's a, a critical bug affecting your entire sprint, can your team respond to that change and can they do it well? And so whatever processes you have in place should help facilitate responding to change. And obviously, I would say pair programming and mod programming is something that we do in our company, and it helps respond to change because we have knowledge sharing that's happening all the time daily. And so everyone knows how everything else works in the system for the most part. So I would say if you guys are bashing Agile and you haven't actually read through this manifesto, it's literally four sentences. And it's just a guideline of, you know, try to focus on these things on the left because we think, and by we, I mean like these people who are much smarter than probably most of the people out there who have done software for a very long time, they recommend doing this because they think it helps better, makes better software. I think Agile is great. We do Agile. We do Scrum. There's some things about Scrum I don't like. Sometimes I feel like retrospectives are pointless and it's just people talking about issues that aren't really issues because they're forced to do it. But some teams need that. Some teams need to be forced to get into a room and talk because without it, they don't actually communicate. And that's a, that's, you know, that's a skill issue with the engineers. You shouldn't be forced to actually communicate openly. That should be happening daily. You should be talking in Slack daily, asking questions, getting feedback, etc. Now, what I like to do on my own personal projects and smaller teams, I recommend just doing Kanban. For those of you who don't know what Kanban is, in this own side project that I'm working on called projectplannerai.com, this is a Kanban board. Basically, you try to keep stuff as simple as possible. You have a small team, you have a select few amount of engineers, and we need to work on stuff. We have this backlog of things that we think need to be added to the system. And at some point you decide, you know what? These are actually important and we need to do them. And I need to prioritize them. This needs to be done first or something. Let me go ahead and just make it so I can manually prioritize these things. And so I would say don't even worry about the sprints. Don't worry about cycles. Just have a list of things you think you might need to do. At some point, you prioritize them and you move them into a to-do column so that your team can grab stuff. And then a teammate or multiple teammates, if you do pair programming, can grab it and start working on it. And then when that is fully deployed to production, you can mark it as done. Okay, And it's super simple. And I think just following a simple process really aligns with this, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. I think what happens is you end up getting people who are like really big into analytics and let's plan, let's figure out the estimates of how long this will take. And then let's, you know, figure out how long did this story actually sit in the to-do column before it got done or how long did that story take in the in progress so we can like, you know, do a burn down chart to figure out when this software is going to be done. I don't recommend doing that. I think it's just a giant waste of time. I think there's too many variables in software engineering to be able to correctly estimate when things are going to be done especially if your team is building something they never built before, right? If you're building like a CMS system and half your engineers on your team have never built a CMS system, every estimate is just going to be loosey-goosey, right? It's going to be an estimate. Now, there's some things that you can estimate and uh, be pretty accurate at estimating, like fixing a small bug could be like a one or two versus implementing an entire feature might be a 13. But for the most part, just follow the manifesto. People who complain about Agile, I don't think they even understand what Agile is, or they even haven't even read this manifesto to understand the, the key criteria that make your team Agile. They kind of just try to do Scrum and they have no idea why they're doing it. So understand these four things. And the last very important thing I'll say about Agile development is that if you're following true Agile, you should be able to change, right? If you can't talk to your team and say, I don't think story point estimation is working and no one is listening, like upper management says, well, too bad, we have to do it. You guys are not agile. Agile is listening to your individual team and changing your processes to either remove stuff or add stuff to make it so that you can ship better, right? That's the whole point of the retrospective. Change the process if the process isn't working. Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about because I think a lot of people are kind of bashing agile and they don't really... I don't think there's like a clear collective terminology of like what we're all talking about here. So go check this out. I'll put it, the link in the description. Other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.